Hey there everyone, this is Danielle checking out Shadows Over Loathing. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Loathing games, if you don't recognise this uh, rather sparse art style, uh, for example, I'll just uh, run through it a little bit. Um, there's a browser-based game called Kingdom of Loathing, uh, which started in 2007 and is still being actively developed right now. Uh, it's kind of like a, a turn-based, uh, sort of a, a real-time turns-based uh, RPG online. Uh, so essentially each day you get like, uh, I think it's like 50 adventures or something like that. Uh, and each time you want to do something, you spend an adventure, and when you run out of adventures, you're done for the day. You've got to go do something else. Uh, I believe Fall in London is a similar kind of game, but I haven't played that one, so I can't talk too much about it. Um, but yeah, Kingdom of Loathing uh, is very silly. Uh, the currency in this series is meat, because meat was easier to draw than actual money <laughs> back in 2007, possibly 2006 or earlier, I don't know. <laughs> Um, this is a this is a game where there's a net hack themed dungeon called the Enormous Greater Than Sign, uh, and when you go, to, there's an area called the Hidden City. You need to go to one of the quests, and it has a hidden office block and a hidden hospital and a hidden apartment building. Uh, it's extremely extremely silly, and that is kind of the main draw. Um, it's also got not super good drawings. They're all stick figures and stuff. Uh, and there's not a lot of colour, as you can see here. This isn't just Shadows Over Loathing. Every game in the series is essentially just like this. Um, so yeah, that's a free browser-based game. You can donate to it uh, to get some... Uh, which gives you some, like, uh, bonus items and stuff that can make things a little easier, but it doesn't really take away the whole time-based thing of you get to do this much stuff each day. And if you run out of adventures, you have to just leave and come back the next day. Um, so in 2017, they made like an offline standalone game in the same universe uh, that you just bought. Uh, you could buy it on Steam, I think it's on GOG and stuff as well, uh, called West of Loathing, uh, which is set in the same universe in their extremely silly take on the Wild West. Uh, so you've got uh, the cows came home and now there were hell cows roaming the land that you have to watch out for. Uh, and because of rodeos, there are now demon clowns as well. Uh, and, like, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, and in West of Loathing, there's no, like, time limit in the same way. Uh, it has a lot of the same mechanics, but because it's an offline game, you play by yourself, uh, and you don't, uh, and it's not expecting you to come back each day, it's using slightly different takes on the same mechanics. It, like, feels a lot like Kingdom of Loathing, but it's also more of a sort of a bite-sized experience. It isn't going to take you weeks and weeks to get through, because it's not using the same energy mechanic, essentially. Uh, so this game, uh, they, they, they also, um, sorry, they did a DLC for West of Loathing as well, which was called uh, Reckoning at Gun Manor. It's really good. I would recommend it. That was, came out in 2019. And then in late 2022, November, I think, this game came out, uh, which I believe is another take in the same universe. Um, I think rather than doing a bit of a Wild West pastiche, as they did the first time around. This is going to be more of a Lovecraftian feel, I'm guessing, from that title and what I've seen of it. I'm really curious to see how this goes. Um, I will mention some of the humour in Kingdom of Loathing is dated. Um, like I said, 2007. Uh, so it doesn't come off super well uh, modern, in modern days. Um, West of Loathing being made 10 whole years later is typically better. Uh, I don't really recall anything overtly horrible in West of Loathing on the comedy front, no tasteless jokes especially. Uh, and I don't expect them here either, because this game came out like just a couple months ago. Uh, but like, if you're going to go play Kingdom of Loathing, that, keep that in mind, because there is a lot of like legacy stuff there from, what is it, like 15 years ago? A long time ago. <laughs> anyway, um... I already jumped into the options, which my face is covering here, but there's just some basic stuff. Uh, I'm going to be playing with my keyboard. Uh, you can play these games with a controller, I believe, but it's, it's essentially a sort of point-and-click adventure. Uh, so playing with mouse and keyboard is probably your best bet. Uh, you can mess with the visuals and 
make it prettier and stuff. I'm going to tick this because, you know, I don't know who's watching. If you have uh, photosensitivity, I'd like to keep you safe. So I'm going to tick the Disable Flashing Lights button here. I don't know how... Um, I, I don't know how how photosensitive this game is going to be, like how much flashing there will be even with that tick. So watch with caution because I've never played this game. Uh, but it should hopefully manage to address things. Um, resolution you can fiddle with, it's already at 1080p. I believe it can go higher if you have a higher display to put it on, but I've got it on my 1080p laptop screen right now, so... <laughs> Uh, and the quality, this is exactly the same as in the previous game, West of Loathing. You could pick bad quality or ugly quality. Uh, I'm not sure if that does much of anything. It, it might be kind of like, um, in old Flash games where you could turn the quality down and, like, the vector vector rendering got worse. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, like, obviously that's, like, a, a Wild Westy joke there, and they've kept it in this version, so... <laughs> uh... There are a few more options in West of Loathing that are not here, like making the game speed a bit faster. I'm curious if they'll show up once we get in game, because yeah, I don't know how this one goes yet. Uh, but we're gonna dive in and see how we do. I've been talking for over five minutes now, so let's just let's just get going. New game. <laughs> Wacid Moving Company. It's how you move. Is that me? Okay, I'm the person with a newspaper on their face. We're going to the diner. It smells like a diner, and it smells like they're open. Hopefully they don't have a no shirt, no shoes, magazine stuck to your face, no service sign posted. <laughs> the Nightingale Diner. Okay, so we've already got some options here. Uh, that's how much money I have. As mentioned, it's meat. This exact drawing of a piece of meat is the same one that they use in the original Kingdom of Loathing, and they used in West of Loathing and all that. These icons, I believe, are also the same across all three games. Okay, we've got more options now. Ooh. Okay, this game has more stuff here. Uh, you can turn off spiders. <laughs> you can turn on spiders. <laughs> I'm just going to start from the top here. Uh, we've got difficulty. Uh, you could change... There was a hard mode in West of Loathing, which was kind of hidden. Uh, but you couldn't toggle it to anything else once you changed it. You just went into hard mode at the start of a run, basically. Um, because it's not a very long game, you can play it in a few hours. Uh, this one, it looks like you can change difficulty at any time, and there are more options. You want to leave it on normal and see what happens? Uh, pacifist mode. Grays out dialogue options that result in combat. Interesting that that's there. Um, in West of Loathing it would just have, like, fight displayed on an option that will cause a combat, and you can just not pick the option if you don't want the combat to happen. It sounds like, uh, but there were some places where it was like, either you, you fight this combat, or you give up, which is the same as going into the combat and losing. Um, it's possible that there's just no mandatory combat at all in this game, because it's actually a passive mode checkbox, but I do want to show how the combat works, so I'm going to let that happen. Invert Y-axis. Obviously a joke, but I want to see if it actually does what it says it'll do. Down is up and up is down. Oh! Okay, that's not quite what I had in mind. <laughs> I was expecting it to reverse the movement controls. It, no, no, no it, it flips the whole game upside down. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to flip that back. What's HDR rendering? If we turn that off, what do we get? It doesn't make any difference. It's very possible that that's another joke, because uh, infamously the HDR feature in Half-Life 2 Lost Coast was this big thing they bragged about that didn't really seem to do much of anything. <laughs> Like, HDR is a real thing, um, and, like, I, I think games are getting more into it again and talking about how cool it is, but, but it's basically just, like, a lighting thing that's not super exciting. This option is haunted. No, I'll take that. Well, that was spooky. <laughs> uh, showing game time, so if it, that's for speedruns and stuff. Uh, skip confirmations. Removes food, potion, and cat boon effect replacement, can confirmation dial, etc. Yeah. Arachnophobia, turn off spiders, you won't encounter any spiders. And arachnophilia, you will encounter so many spiders. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the speed options are here. Like in the previous game, you can make combat, like, animate faster. Um, 
when I, on my on my subsequent playthroughs, I upped it to like maximum speed of 300% just to get through things a bit quicker. Um, but I'll leave it on default for now. Uh, it's nice to have an arachnophobia option. Uh, West of Loathing did not have one. Uh, I believe the only spiders in the game were the ones in uh, Gun Manor, though, so it's possible that that just only came up right then and there. I don't think you'd actually need to fight any of them. Uh, I think you can go around uh, the only location that has map, like that has spider encounters you're supposed to fight. Uh, but this game actually just lets you turn them off entirely, which is quite nice. Um, I know a lot of people uh, suffer from arachnophobia and will find that quite useful. And also, this option is really funny. <laughs> uh, let's just dive in and see what happens. I don't know what the ghost option did. Uh, let's look around. Do -do -do. We shouldn't bother anybody and just look at this magazine off your face. We'll say that no matter how I try to talk to you. Oh. Urgh, urgh, urgh. I'm not talking to you until you wipe that look off your face. Urgh, look? Copy of Look magazine and stuff to your face. Bathroom's in the back. He points over to the right, as far as you know. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I'm tiptoeing now. Oh. The Nightingale welcomes all travellers. Hi! Try coffee. You'll like it eventually. I've got a big glass and metal box here, but you can't actually see what it is. The bathroom, probably? Go inside. You blunder your way into the bathroom, eventually find the sink. After fumbling with the faucet for a while, you manage to disentangle yourself from the mirror. You stare into the mirror, revealing... My face! Ooh, options! Okay, so, West of Loathing did let you pick a couple of things about your character. Uh, I think there were like, maybe three different faces you could cycle through, basically. Uh, I'm curious whether this game will be as gendered as the previous one. These faces are looking kind of gendered, but I'm gonna dive in and see what happens. Um, in the previous one, like, you, you had your name randomized and you, like, shot at little dolls of a guy and a gal to choose what, uh, like, gendered name you wanted. It was, it was a bit weird. I'm curious what I'll do with this one. There you are. Leave the bathroom. Oh, look, it's my face. I haven't got a name yet. Um, you must have loathing you would pick a name before anything else, but we haven't done it yet in this one. The way these young women act these days, with their short hair and their sassy talk, and their dresses that don't even cover their... their... ankles. It's scandalous! And those dances they do, flailing about like I don't know what. I'd have thought Prohibition would have put the kibosh on that sort of tomfoolery, but no sir. Can't imagine dancing a waltz to the music they're playing nowadays, though. And that's the problem right there! This newfangled jazz music with all the drums and... and clarinets and stuff. What kind of word is that, anyway? Jazz. I think our cups got switched. It's supposed to be drinking decaf. Oh, they've got one of those new meat operator multi suction phonographs. Or jukeboxes, as the kids call them. Neat. Hey, there's something in the coin return. Grab it. You gain one meat. Nice. Oh, I can put I can put one in to get the, the song, but I'll hang on to it. I might need it. A couple of young women are chatting breezily over coffee. Can I look at the signs? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I need to talk to the people though. Hello. Hey kitten, what town is this? Poughkeepsie. Uh, Poughkeepsie? It's Poughkeepsie, I think is how you pronounce that one. Poughkeepsie, you should be traveling? Yeah, Ocean City's turning into a real sawmill. So boost your jelly beans breezer for a weekend world of the hot potato. Oh, bushwa, you make it sound like we went south with it. I flew on the car and everything's Jake. Jeez. I'm pretty sure we're only three or three years older than you two, but I barely understand what you're saying. What are you, a cancelled staff? Go put some pepper in your shoes. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, nonsense slang. Oops. I pressed the wrong button. Let me put my game back. Uh... Okay, cool. Sorry about that. I accidentally toggled my camera for a second there. <laughs> uh, I guess I can't talk to them. Can I talk to you? Hey there. Is there something particularly interesting about that coffee? My first one. Today? No. First coffee ever. Oh, what do you think? I think it is a bad beverage. It's bitter and it makes my stomach hurt. Uh, well, it's not for everybody, I suppose. Yeah, I think I'll have another one after this, though. And then maybe every morning for the rest of my life? I'll enjoy. <laughs> I like coffee. <laughs> 
This case contains three pies, which is exactly three pies more than you can afford. Oh, I can pick a name. Well now, that looks much better. I'm Ethel. Um, I'll be Marion. That sounds great. Hi, I'm Marion. Marion who? Uh, Belle? Marion Belle? Marion Belle. Pleased to meet you, Marion Belle. What can I get you? Uh, can I get a cup of coffee? Sure can. Best cup of coffee in the state, if I do say so myself. That'll be one meat. Uh, great. To go, please. Ethel pours you a steaming hot cup of fresh black java. You got an item. Diner coffee. Spend one meat. Diner coffee. Potion. I keep a cup of fresh black coffee. It smells better than any coffee you've ever had on this trip. Anything else, hon? Uh, did the bus to Ocean City pick up here? Sure does. Should be here any minute. Good thing too, I hear in for rain tonight. I'll take you to Ocean City. My uncle lives there. I got a letter from him. Wants me to help help him with something. That's the reason, hon, but it's somebody else's reason. What's your reason? I uh Okay, so this was a thing in West of Loathing as well. Um you could choose whether you were seeking your fortune or uh trying to help people or if you just wanted to like get off this farm were the three options and depending on which one you picked you would get experience buffs to doing that kind of thing during the game. Uh, I'm going to try I just really want to help, because I'm guessing that will give me buffs to social encounters, which is what I like to, I like to do. <laughs> I just really want to help. Your uncle must be pretty important to you. Everybody who needs help deserves help. Go to Perk, Scout's Honor. You believe that one good turn for another leaves the whole world kind. Oh, Oh, isn't that sweet? Well, could use more folks like you, I think. Oh, uh, oh, I have a character sheet. Ah, uh, let me see. Okay, they've changed this up a little bit, which I mean, it looks quite different, but I think it's got the same basic stuff in it. These are the standard Kingdom of Loathing stats. You have Muscle, Mysticality, and Moxie. Uh, basically, they do sort of what they sound like. Muscle is physical attack, and Mysticality is magic, and Moxie is like. Uh, ranged stuff and dodging and stuff like that. And also social skills. Um, and I will start with M. <laughs> uh, max HP 10, max AP. AP wasn't a thing in Kingdom of Loathing, but it is in West of Loathing and this game. Uh, basically, each combat, these stats are always filled up to the, to the top, but most of your skill, like combat skills, use up action points. Uh, so you can't use too many of them in each combat. Uh, basic humanity? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I have a perk called basic humanity. You're a minimum viable person. You occupy space and capable of moving through it and perceiving things. And that gives me all my basic stats. Scouts honor. Yeah, we saw that one already. Basic skills. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, they've changed this up a bit. Um, in West of Loathing, the way it worked was uh, muscle, mysticality, and moxie along with some other things, uh, were skills, and every time you leveled up, you put, uh, you increased one of those skills by one. Uh, it looks like here, uh, you can, you're actually buying out specific skill upgrades, uh, which is a bit different. I'm curious whether, how this is, if it's going to keep going this way, or... Hmm. Oh, good eyesight. You can recognize the letter E from really far away. <laughs> You know, you know you're not supposed to wear plaid and stripes at the same time, but you're so cool you can get away with it anyway. Oh, I'm not very moxious. You might not be the sharpest tool in the drawer, but you're not the dullest knife in the shed. <laughs> oh, also, I should mention, typically magic in the, in the, in the Loathing universe is food-themed. Uh, in Kingdom, you had the Pastamancer pasta and the Sorcerer, as in Sorcerer. <laughs> uh, and in uh, and in um, West of Loathing you had the Bean Slinger, I think it was called, uh, which you were casting spells using beans. Uh, so yeah, it, it's typically you have food-based magic, for whatever reason. Probably just because it's a bit silly. <laughs> These flappers are too... Oh, it's flappers! Oh, lovely. Talk to them. 
These two are still ranting about the problem with kids these days. Well, one of them is. Can I check the bathroom? It's in there a few seconds ago. If you go in again, people will think you're weird. Out of money? Uh, I probably can't talk to anyone now. This guy's still smitting in his coffee. Uh, if we need to leave, Ethel said the bus will be here any minute. I can wait for it. Prologue. On a bus. The one in front of me with glasses. You got the letter you got from Uncle Murray and read it again. Murray Morris, care of Murray's Antiques, 111 Plunkett Road, Ocean City. Dear Marion, I hope this letter finds you well and I hope it finds you quickly. Something quite serious has happened I need to help your adventuresome spirit. Come to my shop in Ocean City as soon as you're able, please. Your uncle, Murray. Oh, I'm having a nap. And there's a clown. And there's another person also, and they're having a nap. Uh, I'm a little bit of beard. <laughs> I'm about to go mad from the monotony of this ride when the bus suddenly judders to a stop. Look out the window expecting to see the sights and sounds of Ocean City, but instead you see an endless expanse of extremely wet trees. Uh oh. The outskirts of Ocean City. W. Willis and Co. bus lines. Take a joyride. Drink red cola. Protect your family. We should ask the bus driver what's going on instead of sporting off aimlessly into the night. Yeah, probably. Hello. This bus lacks in comfort and makes up for an unreliability. I assume it's broken down. Bus driver, talk to him. Well, what's going on? This doesn't look like Ocean City. Nope, sorry about this, but we're out of gas. Oh jeez, you didn't fill up before we left? I filled up the bus, but this trip is exactly one full tank of gas. Can't you an empty gas can? You got not an empty gas can. Plus one additional can. Empty gas can. It's a crude device, but it beats keeping your gas loose on the ground. <laughs> well. Well. Why do I have to go get it? Or why do I have to go get it? Well, I'd go myself, except for two reasons. First being? First, being as I'm the bus driver, I'm legally responsible for this bus, and i got to keep an eye on it. And secondly, because of my leg. Well, what's wrong with your leg? It's that your fellow doesn't want to go wandering around in the rain at night. Well, alright then. Guess I haven't got much choice. Can I borrow your umbrella at least? This is a left-handed umbrella. I am left-handed as it happens. You aren't registered to my umbrella insurance. <laughs> I'm curious whether that'll make my character left-handed moving forward. Sorry about that. Here, I do have a flashlight you can use though. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, yeah, but a flashlight. Did it go in my inventory? Uh... I don't see it, so I guess not. My luggage, my diner coffee, empty gas can. Bertram the Warbler. When you're four years old, Bertram flew in your bedroom window and refused to leave. The movie was familiar ever since. Each round of combat increases your mystica muscle mysticality or moxie. Not all of them. Interesting. Uh, I think familiars are new. I don't think that was an option in the previous game. It would make a dog walk six miles in this rain, no matter how bad I wanted to. Uh, I guess I need to go this way? Ah, oh, here we are. Holco gas. Six and... Six and seventeen sixty-fourths meat per gallon, now with extra lead. Okay. There's a lot of gas left in this pump, but there's no hose on it. This pump is full of water instead of gas. This gas pump is empty. Seems like just yesterday the gas only cost six and fifteen sixty-fourths meat a gallon. Close for the day. <laughs> the station seems to run out of service. Finnegan's optional boxing gym. You don't have to fight if you don't want to. No, it's not compulsory. Uh, hello. A miserable looking hitchhiker standing in the rain, loose off the sticking out of thumb. This feels extremely corny. <laughs> hello. Hi there! Her head turns very slowly to face you and her eyes don't quite meet yours. Give me a lift. I need to get to Albany. Sorry, I'm going the other way. Oh. Also, I don't have a car. What's your name? I'm Marion. 
Lydia. Nice to meet you, Lydia. Although I admit the circumstances aren't great. So, what's in Albany? Do you have family there? No. I just want to go... <laughs> Albany isn't new, though. It's one of the oldest cities in the country. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Do you know where I can get some gas? Gas? The bus I was on ran out, and the driver sent me to find some more. Bus? Yeah, I'm trying to get to Ocean City. Have I been there? Oh, okay then. How about it's rain, huh? Lydia looks very slightly surprised and glances around slowly. Oh. Man. Yeah, sure is. What a night to be stuck out on the road, right? I haven't noticed. I get the feeling you aren't much of a noticer. Well, anyway. Any good movies lately? I saw Dr. Jack Jekyll and Mr. Hyde at the Nickelodeon. Oh, that's a classic. What do you think? It was very scary. I liked it. I prefer comedies myself. Have you seen the new Buster Keaton one, The Cameraman? I don't know who that is. Oh, he's great! It's a show of Junior, that's my favourite. Really terrific. Um, read any good books lately? I read The Invisible Man. It's really good. Oh yeah, Rich She Wells is great! Have you read his new one? Or in the air? I didn't care for it. The one I'm thinking of is Mr. Something on Something Island. I forget the name, but it was terrible. Early works are his best. Like the time machine. Yeah, I love that one. I'm glad we were able to find something to connect on, but yeah. So, um. 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 Okay, bye, good luck. Lydia might be a possible party member? I'm not sure. Uh, you had a number of options for party members in the first game. Which, I mean, West of Loathing, which is the second game, but. We'll see, I suppose. Uh, there's like a house here. Oh, a turtle! A turtle is stuck on your back. Why aren't you helping it? I am, I am helping it. There you go, buddy. Enjoy a blue polar. The honourable choice. An old billboard from before the war. Oh, right, I think I think this is the, this war between red and blue cola. Um, which is obviously, you know, Coke and Pepsi. Um, is like a thing in Kingdom of Loathing as well. You can go back to the Cola Wars. But they drove this box car out here and then took the track away? Boy, somebody must have hated this box car. MD. Topeka. I've heard a lot of nice things about Topeka, but not 1200 miles worth of nice things. Hmm. Oh, yeah, you can jump in this game. Um. I don't think it serves any purpose. You, you could jump in West of Loathing as well, and it, there was never any reason to jump. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't want to be unfriend- I ain't want to be unfriendly, this is a private residence Joel just barged into. Oh, jeez, sorry, everything's so desolate outside. I guess I just assumed this place was abandoned. Well, come morning you'll be right, so... Well, come morning you'll be right, so you might as well get in out of the rain for a spell. Thanks, my name's Marion Bell. Howdy, Marion. I'm Elias. Elias Shekov. Make yourself at home. Chekhov? Do you have any guns on your mantelpiece? He does! Oh, I knew it! I knew it! Oh... Uh, the weird device on top of this box. Ask Elias about it. What's this funny looking thing? That's a duck call. What's it for? It's... For calling ducks. Oh, fun! Used to be. You don't work anymore. On account of being haunted. Haunted? Well, yeah, well, not haunted exactly. A bunch of spiders got in there, and now it sounds all scary when you blow it. Hey, B, you want it, it's yours. You gingerly take the duck call, trying very hard not to think about spiders. You got an item, haunted duck call. I'm pretty sure this duck call is haunted, but you can't remember the story of how it got that way. It reduces an enemy's stats by one when you honk it at them once per fight. What spiders? Good job. <laughs> Okay. All these boxes are labelled bears. Or be it, is it bears? Are these boxes really full of bears? No, these boxes are all canned pears. I had a little fun writing the labels as all. Well. You want a can? Go on, left, it didn't fit. You got an item, Bibson's Extra Sweet Pears. It's a can of pears in a syrup the label describes as sickly sweet. You really should hire a new copywriter. Increases your mysticality by one until you eat something else. Interesting. Uh, West of Loathing, the way it worked was, 
anything you ate or like potions and stuff buffed your stats until the, until the next day. Uh, and the day would advance either when you slept because you had no room to eat anything else and you wanted to go the next day, or when you lost enough combat that you got too angry and passed out. Uh, it sounds like they've changed how that works because this buffs you until you eat something else instead. What's all these boxes of gears? My daughter Simone left those behind him after school. I think I should keep them for her. That makes sense. Wait, are these boxes of tears or tears? They're ridiculous. You can't put neither one of them in boxes. That don't make any kind of sense. <laughs> A kitchen zinc brand kitchen sink. A collection of stains makes its home. Home on the range. These boxes are labeled chairs. What's in here? Stocks? Scissors? Oh, oh, she is. It's a very large box. This is from the piece, most people own either zero or one class ring. Is this box really full of class rings? Yep, about 140 of them. Did you go to college 140 times? <laughs> nah, of course not. Let's collect them is all. Why? While they're rare but not very rare, they're all different interesting ways and they're shiny. That there's a collecting trifecta. Okay then. Uh, I feel like that this gun over the fireplace is gonna have to be relevant somehow. <laughs> oh, uh, we're outside. Okay, so we're outside that way. Uh, I might start from the other end. So we can check all these doors. They're always locked with some kind of elaborate electric lock. What's with this door? Oh, that's my daughter Simone's room who's left for college. Hopefully she ain't left anything important in there, because I plumb forgot how to work that crazy lock she invented. See. It still leads to a bathroom. I see we can use it. Can I use your bathroom? Sure. How'd you know that door was the bathroom, though? Oh, I've always had a knack for knowing which doors lead to bathrooms, is all. Well, good for you, I guess. It's a bathroom. A surprisingly modern toilet for such an old house. Flush it. You flush Shigov's toilet, hoping it won't come back to haunt you later. You gain five experience. Yeah, flushing toilets gave you experience in the previous game, too. <laughs> you can see your own face in Elias's mirror. It's like you're a mirror back home. Gaze into it. Look at yourself in the mirror. Hi, Marion. Smile. Hey there, good looking. Frown. Oh, what's wrong? Scowl. Why I order? Worry. Oh, no, 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 no. Cringe? You remember something really embarrassing you did a couple of years ago? Ugh. Blah, blah, blah. Close your eyes. I'll just assume this looks good. Go back to normal. Oh, there you are. Smile. I'm just gonna keep smiling. Oh, look at that little smile. A vicious clawfoot bathtub. <laughs> uh, it looks like it hasn't been used in a while. Where does this door lead, I ask you? Spare bedroom. Ain't been used in forever. I ain't even bothered opening the door since that dust devil got in there. You're able to help yourself so that you'll find much of use. A dust devil? Yeah, those critters are a real nuisance around here. Attracted to beds that ain't been cleaned under properly. It's not as kind of broom back in 26, it's been a real. What did Simone call it? A nutrient rich environment. Or a little beast, real territorial. Hang on, be careful. Books. A shelf full of pulp westerns. Take a look at one. A handgun tail. Ooh, unlike most old westerns, this one's written from the perspective of a gun. Unlocks advanced trick shooting techniques. Yeah, I'll read that. The story, oh, oh, I need more mysticality. Okay, I'll just hang on to it for now. Uh, in the previous game, like, skill books like this, which I think is what this is, you didn't need any stats to read them, you just read it, and then the book was destroyed afterwards in some comedic way. <laughs> uh... Dusty old nightstand. Search it. And I'm wallet in the drawer to gain ten meat. Yeah, I don't know if I'm equipped to fight that dust devil, because I don't have any weapons. You're leaving this rifle behind? Yep. How come? Well, it's a varmint rifle. Where I'm going, there ain't any varmints. There's vermin, to be sure, and critters and such like that. But the only one I didn't list any examples of a varmint qua varmint, if you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. I need to fret over it right now, in any case. That gun is for later. Later? Yep, much later. Huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's have a look out here. There's nothing on the clothes except a pair of old socks and an old gun. 
loot it. Expect the gun to leave the sock. Don't look safe. Got an item. Rusty pistol. Okay, I have a weapon now. Your Moxie plus one physical. You spend all your time, all that time cleaning your gun, and the rain comes along and ruins it. Typical. <laughs> mm. That scarecrow is a bit more intimidating than usual. The crows around here must be real aggressive. That's where the gunshots are coming from, I guess. The barn doors are locked. It should be impenetrably dense to wander in these woods. Let's try unpacking my luggage. Oh, okay, can I go inside and open it? Yeah. Being polite to go through your stuff in someone else's living room. Okay, so I can't un unpack that stuff till later, I guess. Uh, I could try fighting the Scarecrow, and I could fight, try fighting the Dust Devil. I don't know how up either of them are going to be. Uh, let's give it a try. Oh, uh, no, that's encouraging me not to. Maybe I'll go this way. We'll try fighting this guy first. Okay, so this is the same basic combat system as in the previous game, by the looks of things. Uh, yeah, you can attack with various weapons that you happen to have. Uh, oh, you can throw stuff. Neat. a lot of damage. I'm getting healed by my bird, so I might be okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Take that shoot crow. That's yeah, just a regular scarecrow with a gun. I'm getting five experience. Excellent. This thing's crow menacing days are over. An old tractor. An old rag shoved in where the gas cap should be. Pull the rag out. Pull the rag out and sniff the tank. Sounds like there's a little gas left in there. Collect it. You dip the rag into the gas tank. Soak up all the gas and it out onto your can. You've got an item. One third's full gas can. This track, that tractor is the right most interesting thing in this part of the country. Nothing to do, I'll have to do with this tractor except maybe sit, in, sit, it, sit it in and pretend to be a farmer. Sit in it? Sit on it? Do that then. Hope I have time to sow the field before it's time to deworm the lambs. Keep pretending to farm. Gotta feed the bulls before sun up. I'm gonna sow the buckwheat and then reap the rye. Time to rake some barley. Yeah, I need pretending to farm is hard work. Got enough experience now to learn a skill. Open the character sheet. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, let's see, I have 15. Uh, I usually go for magic first, so I might buff my mysticality. Okay, now my stats. Good. Did my total spit total somewhere? Or it click on me? There we go. Yeah, two mysticality. Uh, I don't know. It should be helpful. We'll see how we do. My uh, barn is locked. Are you moving out? Uh, yep. Finished packing, so I'm just waiting for the movers to come hit the last load of stuff. You've got movers coming in the middle of the night? Nah, in the morning. But I went and packed my teddy bear and got what box is in. Can't sleep. I see. Why are you leaving? Well, my daughter went off to college, there's nothing keeping me here. I never particularly cared for farming anyhow, just kind of fell into it, you know? I reckon I'd take the opportunity to retire and travel a bit. It's the kind of trouble I get up to. Yes. So what's your story? What did you know on a night like this? I got a letter from Uncle Murray? It sounded urgent, so I'm gonna bust the Ocean City. I ain't sure how to tell you this, but you got a ways to go yet. Yeah, the bus ran out of gas, so the driver sent me to scavenge for some more. I gotcha. Well, I think there's an old gas can in the barn out back. You're welcome to it. Thanks. I gotta warn you though, you have to fight my daughter for it. What? Well, technically, I should say my daughter's a monster. What? The thing my daughter Simone built. What? I think my kid's a real technical weird. She built an auto, auto ominous robo traption up with plowing and harvesting and the like. Worked real nice too. Wow. 
problem is after she left it blew a fuse a what's it tube and got violent. I'm pretty good with machinery when it comes to those newfound with electrics. I might as well be a dog trying to read Play-Doh, so I'll get in the barn. Uh-huh, I see. Welcome to try your hand to hand again, so if you got a mind to, please be careful. It's got a lot of sharp bits on it. Here's the key. Farm a Sheikov's barn key. The third most common sort of key you find on a farm, after Don and her. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> No, I should try to fight the Dust Devil first. Well, maybe not though. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look and see. I can, I can open the barn now. It's like you hear the doors open and leave the key in the lock in case the lights can lock up again later. Ugh, I have a recurring nightmare. It's about searching for something in one of these. A haystack. This is a joke from West of Loathing. Um, every haystack in the game, you could search it to get a needle. Uh, this one you can't. <laughs> By the looks of things. It's a nice barrel, but it'd be nicer if it had anything in it. This cabinet is rusted shut. Of course, it's a free muscle. Just a painting of a bunch of tools. Just the arrangement of objects around it, you can shoot this is a machine for turning hay bales into loose hay. <laughs> yes, you put the hay bales into it and they turn into loose hay. <laughs> of course. I'm gonna get past that thing without destroying it. Uh, destroy it then. Okay, it doesn't have a lot of health, but we should be fine. Uh, let's throw a rock at it. And then I'll shoot it. There you go, that was easy. Simone's monster has a pile of parts on the floor. You gain five experience. Rest in parts. The workbench for welding. There's a lot of a lot to connect to. Except your reward. Victory is sweet. Probably the lead that makes it sweet. You go up there, it won't be your hay fever, and you're falling out of loft fever. Maybe mysticality wasn't the best choice. It looks like it wants me to have moxie, but I should be. Hey, Elias. Hmm? What can I do for you? I uh, had to beat up your scarecrow. Sorry. Well, I was leaving it behind anyhow. But why'd you go into a thing like that for? Shot at me with a gun. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's perfectly reasonable then. <laughs> Guess I'll try fighting this and see what happens. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. Uh. That's a lot of damage. Oh dear. Did you listen to Shikov? I guess so. Oh, I don't think I actually got punished at all for that, so that's probably fine. But yeah, I can't fight the Dust Devil. Um, is there anything over here? Oh yeah, this thing. An open fire in an enclosed space. Classic. A cheerful looking hobo tootles idly on a harmonica. Interrupt his tootling. Hi there, I'm Marion. Well, howdy there, neighbor. I'm Howie. Pleased to meet you. I'm not actually from around here, though. Oh, I see it. This whole country is my home, so everybody's my neighbor. That's nice. Eat that other old trespassers. Better get off my property. <laughs> I'm just joshing your friend. Have some jerky? What kind? Clam. It's a local delicacy. Huh. I'll have some jerky. You got an item clam jerky. It's always nice to get a gift from a kindly stranger, but it's especially nice when that gift is dried flesh. Hey, yeah, I kind of buy this stuff myself. I think a dried slug, but saltier. I kind of think of it, that's exactly what it is. What are they selling me on this local delicacy? If you ask me, their locals are a little bit weird. Fine. Where are you from? Originally, I'm from Hawaii, but I got bored of gorgeous tropical beaches and decided to hit the rails. You rode the rails from Hawaii. <laughs> yep. Real challenging trip for a first time hobo, but I made it through alright. Did I think of going back? They only got the one track there, so it was a one way trip. I head back for a visit once I build the second one, though. Huh. You live here? Not permanent like, but I've been camped out of here a few days. All alone? We used to be a bit lively, but the boss has sent a railroad bull to run everybody off. Railroad bull? You mean like a cop? Yeah, you could say that. I think he's still prowling around up back if you can't attach your metal. I don't advise it, though. 
Is he packing heat? No, he's unarmed, but one of your arms would make a pretty good club once he gets it off here. Hmm. Any plans for the future? A word on the wall is there's a camp forming in Ocean City. Figure I'll mosey on over there once this rain lets up. A word on the wall? I never heard that phrase. Is it like, through the grapevine? <laughs> similar, similar. Hey. Who is Nuts? Is this knapsack your only luggage? Oh, that ain't mine. That's been here since about like, before I arrived myself. I was able to figure out how to, how to, how to work out how to do anything. Figure out the trick, you're welcome to it. You inspect the bag, it appears to be latched shut with one of those puzzles made out of bent wire, nails and steel wire. Now he wasn't just harmonicaring Dixie. I think I'm just gonna clear. Ooh, yeah, more petrol, that's the stuff. I'm guessing. Shine? Mmm. I think it's everyone that you send to the CSA Institute of Technology or mug someone who did. Oh dear. Look, I can buff some of my stats by, like, by eating this food. I might be able to access more stuff if I do. Uh, let's try eating the jerky. That would give me two muscle. Quite lightly clamier. The body's now approximately 1% clam on account of the small amount of clam you just put in it. Following too. <laughs> Push the door open. A place to shoot a filthy linoleum on the ground in order to lose the legitimacy to the outdoor kitchen. Still in this pose beyond top, but you could probably salvage the ladle. Do so. This isn't a ladle, it's a spatula. No one has shoes so messed up. Ooh, a magical weapon. Used hard and cleans never. Two fangled indoor outdoor refrigerators. I have a good mason jar full of gasoline in here. 133% full gas can. <laughs> you hoping for an outdoor dining room? There's just woods in that direction. Carving on the trunk of this tree. It says how he loves playing the harmonica. Aww. Uh, uh oh, it's that railroad bull how he told you about. Although railroad minotaur would probably be more accurate. Take the bull by the horns. Uh, let me have a look here. Pop out my gun for this grimy spatula. It's gonna go better for me. I haven't found any food that increases my moxie, which is a bit strange, but let's give it a shot. Seven health, okay. Uh, I'm gonna honk at him first. Oh, it says he's gonna attack me for four damage, I see. I, you didn't get that kind of prediction in the previous game, which was... Nice that they changed it. Oops. Yeah, I am taking more damage, but I do have a bird. We'll see how we do here. Looks like my AP comes back after each turn. Uh, unlike the previous game where it was for the whole combat you had AP. Yeah, this will be fine. We can do it this way. Here you go. You beat the Minotaur. Bertram the Warbler grows, grows stronger. Plus one maximum HP. Excellent. A 1911 Ford milk crate wheels. That model never really seemed to take off. Oh look, it has a gas can on it. Help yourself. 166% full gas can. <laughs> Anything in that direction is trees. Not interesting trees. Doing my character shoot here. Oh, cool. No, only 15 experience by something else. I don't think I can buy more mysticality because Quick Wit is already bought and I just need to buy something else now. Got Clamia. Mm, I don't want to go to Topeka. I could try to fight the Dust Devil again, or I could just leave. This I think the fact where Lydia was standing. Read it. Historic site. At this exact spot on the 13th of October 1908, the state's first mass produced automobile, a Ford Model T purchased by Hiram O. Crullins, accidentally struck and killed the state's first hitchhiker, Lydia Barnsley. 
So apparently that woman you talked to a few minutes ago has been dead for exactly 20 years. Good. Well, everything about this is great and you aren't regretting this trip before you even arrived. Go about your normal non-haunted day. Did you open here already? I didn't. Ease loaf. Fish a moxie by one. I do like moxie. These are out of postcards. All the scenery around here is invisible. <laughs> Empty oil cans. The whole pyramid of them. Where did the cash register is pointed toward the front of the store? Who did? Game 7 meat. I know a baseball bat laying against the wall here. Grab it. You think it's a weapon? Yeah. It's a melee weapon. Um. Probably better to keep using my mystic, mystic weapon though. Park plugs. Use them. Ryan says employees only. Are you an employee? Yes. Really? Never mentioned working in a gas station. I'm just kidding. Well, since the place is out of business, it probably wouldn't hurt you hurt or anything for you to go back there, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Broken radio can still be considered nice. This is a pretty nice radio. A desk. Probably op optimized for doing gasoline-related business. Four of the drawers contain nothing but old receipts and pencil stubs. This one's locked. This shelf smells like axle grease and old paint, maybe because that's what's on it. This shelf is laden with miscellaneous electrical doodad widgets and doodads. We don't have any use for any of them, though. This shelf is full of old personnel files. Each object you examine on this shelf is dirtier and more boring than when you looked at before. Nothing There's a door. Hang clear of lift before operating, Steve. I really want to know the story behind this sign. A weird machine. Fuse box. As advertised, this is a box containing one fuse. But if the fuse is broken, which is probably not intended, you keep an eye out for a replacement. There's one around here somewhere. The big tool chest, but all of the good tools have already been stolen. Nothing happens, but still have power. Oh, fuses. Yeah, there we go. For a fuse. We've got an item. Fuse. Would they call this a fuse when the whole point of it is to split apart if something goes wrong? Place. This car is missing its gas tank. But there is a few glass of gasoline in the cup holder. <laughs> Got an item. Two hundred percent full gas can. <laughs> Oh, I don't... it's just extremely silly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I guess I'll finish the prologue and see what happens next. Hey there, friends. Any luck with the gas? You sure have to drive your gas can? Well, his gas can. Well, huh. That can. This can doesn't usually hold that much gas. I'm not sure how you did that. Well, whatever. Are you ready to hit the road? I'll leave you in just a minute. Feel the no stone on turns, alright mate? I respect that. Just let me know when you're ready. No rush. I'll be right here waiting. In the boring rain. Don't be long. We can get on the bus and see what happens next. Ready to go? Let's get out of here. Fix the can and the bus has changed. And with that, we're on our way. All aboard! You climb back onto the bus and return to your seat. And soon you're dozing off the sound of rain scattering on the window beside you. Fortunately, it's barely an approximation of sleep. Kind of sleep that you slip into so gradually you don't even notice your sleep until something wakes you up. Don't get straight. You realize your meandering thoughts of the past few minutes have been utterly strange, shadowy tendrils of whispering ideas. Hey kids, it's your stop, right? Then I've totally forgotten. Ugh. What? All ashore is going ashore. Thanks for traveling with us, Busco. Oh, we're on Ocean City. Sail, sail, sail. Going out of business. Going seems inaccurate. Now me surplus store is closed for the night. There's Murray's antique, so she knows where I'm going. Trash can, full of trash, dig through it. She's blown. Turn the door says please. Aww. I think this store sells bloke broken glass and draft. Hmm, it's probably not perfectly solid. Just the people renting it that were condemned. This trash this trash has reached this city that can't can draft. Given the current conditions, dark and stormy, you probably shouldn't wander into any alleys. 
door to the newspaper office is locked, and the window is boarded up. It looks like print really is dead. It's going to have at least seven or eight more decades left. Wait, the bank is closed. I don't see anything interesting within walking distance in that direction. Let me scratch some weird symbols in the sidewalk here. I saw some of those earlier in the like train car or whatever. Go past. This direction. Be nothing you want in here anyway. Hello. Cobra seems wholly unperturbed by the rain. Nice weather we're having. <laughs> he smiles, then looks up and lets the rain splash on his face for a while. <laughs> Suits me to spine, I guess. Wise man once said, the rain falls on poor women and rich men alike. Is that before umbrellas were invented? Or My name's Gus, by the way. Hi, I'm Marion. Pleased to meet you, Marion. Say, you wouldn't have a couple of meat to spare, would you? Sure. Put Gus some meat in your beans. Thank you very much, Marion. Old Gus won't get your kindness, you bet. Here, take her easy, Gus. Nothing in that direction except the road you arrived on. Walking all the way back there probably isn't a good use of your time right now. Let's go to the shop. I'm being very thorough and checking everything. Bus stop. Bell over the door jangles as you walk into Mount Murray's Antiques. The young woman at the counter looks up as you enter. Oh, hi, you must be Marion. You don't really get many customers at this time of night. Or at all, really. Uh, that's me. You're expecting me. You're expecting me? Yeah, Murray, Murray didn't say much about you, but he gave me that letter to mail. My name's Jessica. Oh, jeez, you're soaking wet. Come in and I'll get you a towel. You walk over to the counter, trying not to drip on any vintage bric-a-brac as Jessica grabs a threadbare bath towel from a shelf and pulls the towel off before tossing it to you. Thanks. Is Uncle Murray here? His letter is wasn't very specific. He... isn't. Is that in kind of an ominous way? Where is he? Wish I knew. I had a line on another artifact and said it was going to be a tough one. They told him he should get some backup, but he wasn't willing to wait. He just wrote that letter and told me to mail it if he didn't come back. There's something I'm missing here? This is an antique shop, right? You make trying to talk Great Aunt Ruthie into selling her mother's Chesterfield sound like a deadly spy mission. Yeah, it's going to take some explaining. Well, I'm definitely intrigued now. Explain away. You don't have a lot of time just now, but follow me and I'll give you a quick sketch. Okay. Jessica leads you into a back room furnished with some desks and some strange looking machinery. Welcome to our back office. Hub of our little operation. I'm guessing by operation you're talking about something other than antiques? Well, yes and no. See, a few years ago, Murray found out there's a bunch of antiques circulating that are, well, kinky would be a real understatement. Kinky? Murray called them tainted. Dark magic, real bad mojo, you know? Cursed. Oh, I thought for a second you were making bathtub gin or something. No joke. That's what our real job is here. The antique store is... is just... well, not exactly a front. We find a lot of regular antiques too, and selling them keeps us in scratch, but really we're trying to hunt down all these evil doodads and neutralize them so nobody gets hurt. And Uncle Murray went out to get one and never came back? That's long and short of it. Yep. What do you say? Are you in? Well, yeah. I can't just leave him in the lurch like this. Great. You hear the shop door open, and after a moment a goblin peeks her head into the office. Hello? Oh hey, that's swell timing. Hey Gabby, uh, Murray's... Oh, Murray's sister's kid showed up, come meet her. Oh, cool. Look at that. Look, 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 look. You can, you can pronouns. Was not expecting that. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just gonna say, hi Gabby, pleased to meet you, but yes, you can, you can pick. Oh, very good. Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. Hi, hello. The pleasure is all Gabby's. Gabby, would you be a dear and carry her luggage to Murray's room? Grab some blankets and stuff out of the cupboard? She can sleep there till we find Murray. You've gotten it. Gabby picks up your suitcase and carries it through a door in the back of the room. Right, I could really use some sleep. I'm here to call right now. This desk is a mess. Whose desk is this? Murray's. Keep nagging at him to straighten it up before somebody bumps in here to call the National Guard to dig him out of the avalanche. The curse proof shovels in his quarter exorcist and thing. Anyway, best not to mess with it. Will do. I mean, won't. I'm not sure what this clock is telling, but it sure isn't time. This is your new bedroom, apparently. You can hear Gabby bustling about in there, making the bed and such. 
pronouns. There's like a pronoun selection. Oh. I was not expecting that at all. What? I don't even hazard a guess at what this contraption does. I have time to play games right now. There we get this desk. Hey Jessica, whose desk is this? Charles Wallace, our handyman. He's up to seeing a league on the roof right now, but he'll be back by this tonight. What's this cat's name? Calliope. I already got her a couple of years ago. Scritch behind the cat's ears. We give Calliope a good scritching, but she doesn't react at all. Why doesn't Calliope like me? Eh, she'll warm up eventually. I'll give her some sardines. She loves those. Do you have any sardines? Well, we're all out. We'll get some more tomorrow. I have them at the cola will surplus store next door. Okay. I wonder where this door leads. Find out. You open the door and there's a brick wall behind it. Apparently it goes nowhere. You go way too tight to go back out in the street tonight. Hang on a sec, you can't go to sleep yet. I'm pretty sure I can. I bet I could do it right here while I'm still standing up. <laughs> well, I hate to spring this on you, but there's something we need you to do before the night's over. I'd be happy to help. You know those cursed artifacts I was talking about? Since info on them is so sketchy, you've been working on a machine that can detect them with radio waves. I call it the Tectotron 1000. It's gotten it up and running since Murray left, and it turned out there's a tainted thing practically on our doorstep. Hmm. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's not great. I was gonna have Gabby go get it, that's why she came over tonight. But since she turned up out of the blue, I guess there's no time like the present. I am probably not exaggerating when I say there is literally no time except for the present. What? As in, there might not be a future. We don't have far to go. It was just down the other end of the block, as the readings are right. There's a newspaper office that got shut down earlier this year. Should be in there. Well, Gabby will go with you. She's good in a fight. Right? Oh, jeez. Yeah, well, hopefully it won't come to that, but you never know. Hey, Gabby. Yeah, we repeat with an expectant grin. Go to the newspaper office with Maria and help her get that hat, okay? Okay, Gabby is ready for an action. Let's mosey. Uh, I'd will do. <laughs> Alright, fine. So it's a hat? A cursed hat? Got into the readout? Yeah, a men's fedora, probably. I'm supposed to, what, just break in and take it? Well, not break, exactly. I meant to finagle a spare key out of the guy at the realtor's office. I'm pretty sure that still counts as breaking and entering. Maybe in an out and back... In and out and back here and in bed before you know it. Guess he gave you this key to the newspaper office you can retrieve a curse tap for. Oh, you're adorable. I like your dress, Gabby. Gab with Gabby. Hi, Gabby. How's it going? Sounds like a cat meowing. It's the breeze. You live in Ocean City long, Gabby? Oh, yes. All of Gabby's life is here. Gabby's great, 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 great grand Gabby came and popped just some blocks from over there. Or topping, as they would say. Haha. <laughs> Wow, well, so your family's been here for quite a while, huh? Yes, 14 years. Um, goblins in this setting are like, um, they're, 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 they're a fungus, basically. Um, and they talk like that. Like, they have a slightly broken English. <laughs> a firecracker or a fist cry, huh, Gabby? Haha, <laughs> Gabby likes fighting and dancing, the two best things. Gabby invented fight dancing once, but this world was unready for it. Maybe 50 years later. Oh, you're so cool, Gabby. Let's go. Oh, let's go, let's go. <laughs> what follows? Cool. Um, outside of, like, combat encounters and stuff, your, like, partner characters in the previous game would just stand somewhere. They wouldn't follow you around. But it didn't really have... Uh, areas like this, like hub areas, so it makes sense that it works a bit differently. This place, right? Okay, let's get this hat thing if we pass it from exhaustion. Lock the door. You take a deep breath and unlock the door. You give the key to Gabby to save keeping. Uh, how much talking? I'm gonna stop reading things out, I think, because I'm. Ugh. Nice and coffee. Nasty old coffee. Oh, yum yum yum. A few months ago, somebody decided this coffee wasn't good enough to drink. You apparently disagree with that decision. Um, I guess I need to look in some of these places to actually find the thing I'm looking for. Not 
anything in the wreckage. Uh, nasty old leftovers. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, I can use it to debuff people. That's nice. Is that pink slip? <laughs> Harvest all the printing press. <laughs> Pneumatic tube system operation manual. Neat. We'll, uh... I'll finish talking in the typewriter. All that government corruption. Pink slip, say. A lot of people are getting fired. Uplinks. Ooh. Vitality buff. That's quite nice. Another pink slip? <laughs> Fuck a maybe. It's long time um, I coin. It means ridiculous or implausible. <laughs> Okay, let's check the water cooler. Let's hit that a bunch of times because sometimes you get a buff for activating those things over and over. Okay, trap door. Down we go. Oh, um, hello. Newspaper. Hold the menu. Power on. Red A. This the green button. Pull the lever. Yellow light. Not one of the options. Am I colorblind? Am I character colorblind? <laughs> Uh, there isn't actually a dial I can do anything. Red, red, blue, green. A. So I want C, right? It's like Rigi Biv. That's right. Whoa. Someone's gonna get some very strange mail. And how? What were those things anyway? What were they doing down here? Are they trying to start an underwater newspaper? I wouldn't work in, could smear. Very old manhole cover. That'll be the hat just going to recover. Take it. You got an item. Terribly cursed fedora. Nothing good can come of this. I could wear it. I'm not going to. Ominous, vaguely person-shaped stain on the ground. That is ominous. Mm -hmm. I hope I could have caught those guys instead of sucking them up in pneumatic tube, but that was funny. I'll put that back. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm How's it going? Did you find the hat? Uh, I found a hat? I guess it's the one again? It doesn't look unusual. Although... Yeah? Well, it does freak me out a bit. I can't put my finger on why. I know what you mean. It feels kind of like you have a headache, except you don't actually. I have a feeling of red. Something terrible is about to happen, but I don't know what it is yet. Well, that is definitely not related to the fact that I need you to take that hat and go sit in that machine over there. Uh, why? They're on cursing machine. You get the curse off that hat, right? Oh. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, but, uh... What? Can't we just put the hat in the machine? Why do I need to be involved? Because the machine needs a mind to guide the uncursing process. Together you lift the curse from the hat and transform it into a sort of allegorical dream space that the machine can transfix. Uh, what? Sorry, I know it's a lot. Let me rephrase. The uncursing machine uses a subconscious mind to drive a wedge between an item and its curse. 
The item is cleansed relatively easily, but that doesn't negate the curse fully. Once separated from the machine from the item, the machine stores the curse and allows you to cyclically project into it to try to resolve the metaphorical scenario at the core of its existence. That's where things can get a little weird. Yeah, I know it sounds crackers, you have to go to try to understand. Okay, um is it this one? Gun cursing machine. Sit in it. Terribly cursed Fedora. Sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and pull the weird metal stone thing down over your head. Would you like to uncurse today? No sooner you sat down in the machine, then with hiss positively with a hiss, positively whiffs the fedora Oh, no sooner have you sat down than the machine with a hiss positively whiffs the fedora straight up into the dome. The hat rattles around in there angry like a snake in a cement mixer. After a good loud minute, lops limp and wet into your lap. But for ominous energy, once with just a terribly cursed hat is gone, it is now simply a terrible hat. The hair is clean, both spiritually and laundrily. The curse itself still lives, transfixed as a dreamlike construct within the machine. Now, how do I get rid of that curse? Mm. See, curses are like energy, Marion. They can't be created or destroyed, only changed. I remember who said that? Isaac Newman? Newton? Newton Newman, yeah. That machine knows how to take a curse from one object and put it on itself, but as for how you change a curse? Well, I don't know, that's some higher consciousness, spiritual stuff. I don't know much about that. We're a Newton Newman kind of guy. Fedora's curse bounces around the innards of this machine, daring you to come to your consciousness inside it. I'm safe, I'll do that. Uh. Oh, I'm playing as this guy? Okay. Okay, um. Fedora. Fedora Reserve. I heard thy death call, creature. Rest now, I will find in thy Mordra. A tree fell before its time, a ground stained with sin. Yes. That in Arcadia Ego, even in Arcadia Death, even in Paradise. Hello. Thou know who I am and why I am here. I, Akata, there has been a Mordra. What knowest thou of Mordra? I did not do the mortar, and that is all. What mo have thee for me? Only this, I have three brothers. One of us always tells the truth, one of us always lies, and the third of us does not speak in at all, but honks. I find in thee a liar, there is no thing I can do to save in thee. I cut out thou art a servant of the wood. <laughs> Blessed be her branches. <laughs> this is extremely silly. Big power in the wood today, Cutter. Aye, a tree has fallen in the forest and is made a sin. But not me a sinner, that I assure thee. I claim to be without sin. None of us is without sins, but mine do not run to mortar. Then whose? Look for my brother. My brother speaks of three brothers. One who always lies, one who always tells the truth, and one who does not speak in at all but honks. What speak in thee of this? It's fairy talk. No thing has honkin' in this land since Mother Duck laid the big egg. No honkin' since then? No, sire. Hmm. Something is rotten in the wood, Cutter. I am Morda, with perversions at its source. Speak to me, perversions. They have no thing to say, for I do not tarry with them. What do thou telling me? I am troubled by the Morda, but of it I know no thing. I warn thee, my forgiveness makes no realm for liars. And I will do what thou must, Cutter, I have no doubt. My brother speckens of three brothers, one who always lies, one who always tells the truth, and one who does not speckin at all but honks. What speckin thee is this? I do not honkin, sir, I swear in upon it. Never has thou honkin? Never, never, tis a sin in mine eyes. Okay, so none of these people are honking. Which tree has done the, the mortar? It's got to be the it's got to be the first one, right? Because they said that one of the tree brothers always honks, and none of them are always honking. And these two have said that nobody honks. They're being consistent with each other, uh, which is only possible if this one was lying about the situation. I say I do not did I did not do the mortar. <laughs> I was say, one of three brothers, one of us always tells the truth, one of us always lies, and the third of us does not speck at all but honk. Thou lie about honking tree, what say? 
Thy brother's honk and not. Thou wouldst light the cutter of the wood. Thou wouldst do mortar in the wood. Aye, thou hast, thou hast the right of it. I sought only to distract in thee while making my escape. Goodbye, cutter. Do not run from me, tree. I do not run? Nay, I grow in. In one hundred years I'll have half grown so tall and strong. Thine axe will never fell in me. I will not wait one hundred years. Die, Mordra. Big rot in the wood today, Cutter, and... Wait, what? No, that's not you. You don't talk like that. Dark thoughts of trees, axes, and bloody sap cling to your skin. You shake them off like dreadful cobwebs. Gain five experience. You're not sure what just happened, but as you turn over the formerly terribly cursed fedora in your hands, you feel confident the curse which plagued the starchy little felt thing is finally gone for good. Put the hat back on. It nearly sparkles now. Ooh. Now what you've got to reckon with is whether the kind of gal who goes around wearing a fedora. It'll do. <laughs> Job for knickknacks and tchotchkes. Take a look. Ah, what the heck? Oh no, all my stuff. That got destroyed. The television set. No shows have been invented yet. <laughs> of course they haven't. Maybe to sleep. Oh, dream time? Having a dream? A dream about school. Most of my favorite literary ghost. Oh, wow. Six lockers. Investigate. First is full of ants. Second's full of peanut butter. There's honey shrine to Babe Ruth. Fourth is empty. Fifth is full of cookbooks in French. Seventh one? Old school papers. They're your papers. How I spent my summer by Marion Bell, age six. This summer I visited my Uncle Mary. Uncle Murray is funny. He knows magic. I had a fun time with Uncle Murray. The end. Look under the papers. An overdue library book. He shaped this book out 13 years ago and spent the last 12 years and 50 weeks feeling slightly guilty about not returning it. Hello there, you must be. She looked to the book on her desk. Ah, here we are. Belle. Marion Belle. Yes, I'm Marion Belle. I'm your academic advisor. It's time for you to choose your class. But I dropped out. In real life, certainly, you must have a choose the class. Oh, I get it. This is where I pick a character class. <laughs> now then, there, it looks like there are three classes for you to choose from. There's advanced geeking and throwing. This class is for pig spinners. Then we have overdue of curd conjuring. This is a class for cheese wizards. And finally, weird time signatures 504. This course is for jazz agents. Uh, I'll be a cheese wizard. As trained chef magi, cheese wizards use their intellect and mysticality to accomplish their goals. In combat, they wield hard elemental cheeses to damage their foes, and soft, soothing cheeses to heal themselves and their allies. I love it. I'm a cheese wizard. You're a cheese wizard, Marion. Brilliant. Now, it's just a minor matter of your minor. It looks like you've already completed it, but it doesn't say what you studied. Uh, it's a cryptobotany. Ah, a cryptobotanist. So you guys in all manner of plant-based arcana. Yep. Cryptobotanist. Well, with that, I have to leave. We're done. Feel free to wake up and go home with your day. Uh, how do you go about doing that? He smiles and points to the door on the right side of the screen. I mean, the right side of your dream. Just through that door. Thank you. Through. I assume if you skip the prologue, which is usually an option, it is in West of Loathing, you go directly to this dream sequence where you pick your class. Your room. Oh wow, look at all the stuff I can do now. I guess because I have a class now. Perk, I've got botanist. Morning, Marion. How'd you sleep? Wait, why are you still wearing those wet clothes? I wonder how the clothes burned up in a freak luggage fire. Geez, that's weird and unfortunate. 
you seem less surprised by it than I would expect. I've gotten kind of accustomed to weird and unfortunate stuff happening around here. You pick out some clothes from the shop out front, you're not looking like someone's dusty old grandma. That'll be alright, thanks anyway. Well, since you got the sleep out of your eyes, I've got another mission for you. Another curse thing? Yeah, I've had my eye on it for a while, but it keeps moving around. Let's see the ratings put at the local speakeasy at the back finale at the other end of the block. The artifact isn't there right now, but that's where I'd start looking. You got some clues? I see a rich watch of some kind. A pocket watch, or maybe a wristwatch. I can't be certain. A watch in the speakeasy in the alley. Got it. Anything else? Uh, a to-do list. Ooh, nice. Password for the spill sticks. I've got the meat. The army surplus next to a shop. Anything you need in case things get rough. That's ominous, but thanks. Oh, I see. Yeah, my to-do list is here. Neat. It wasn't here before. Before, was it? No, the antique bookshelf man came by this morning and Charles couldn't resist the deal. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't believe I slept through the antique bookshelf, man. <laughs> All the books are in Latin. I never learned Latin myself, so who knows if it's history of the Roman Empire we got there. Or pornography. Could be both. You know any Latin, Martin? Matt Marion? Uh... You kidding? Yeah, yeah, they say it's a dead language, but I think nothing ever really dies. It ends up in our store. It looks. These are... Ooh. Ooh. I'll have that. Random book from <laughs> Laura Epson Bella said a meta piece about graphic design in the Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> I can imagine that knowledge become relevant to your quest, but hey, now you know where to find it. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, I would love a combat skill. Oh, I need to spend some experience on it. Oh, I see. I, I can upgrade it better if I can read the epilogue. I see how it works. Neat. Um. Can I read Handgun's Tale yet, or don't I don't have enough? No, my number's still too small. Um, I think I'm gonna wrap up for now. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, they've adjusted a bunch of stuff, and the flavor's a bit different, and they prompt you to change your pronouns if you want, which is pretty cool. But essentially, this, this is more West of Loathing. Um, and I love West of Loathing, so this is really cool. <laughs> Uh, they seem to have polished things up a lot compared to the first game. I'm not sure if you'll have like a world map for getting around, because you do in West of Loathing, and I haven't got one yet in this game. Chapter 1. Welcome to Ocean City. It might be something I can do now. Maybe? Or you might just walk around on this screen instead. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this a lot. Uh, it's extremely silly and a lot of fun, and I assume it's a new game. I figured if I clicked a new game, it would like prompt me to like make like I don't know if I don't know if it would what it's gonna do to my existing file. Oh. Oh, I got ran over on the title screen. <laughs> I did not know that could happen. <laughs> I assume, much like West of Loathing, what will happen is it has a character select screen once you've like, created multiple files, but uh, I can't really tell from here. Anyway, uh, that's Shadows Over Loathing uh, for about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, you probably noticed I was really enjoying their sense of humor here. It's it's extremely silly. It's very it's very um it's, very, it's, it's a lot of wit, a lot of um airplane kind of stuff, uh, and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and also these games, it is generally fun to play. Um, pretty neat combat mechanics, which I haven't really gotten. A, 
good look at yet. I've only basically just started, but I can see that they've refined the systems a lot compared to the first game, so... I mean, the previous game. Compared to us, it was. So, we'll see how that goes uh, as we progress. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!